Good evening everyone, Daniel Miller here. Thank you so much for joining my gaming industry news broadcast and thank you for being here every evening on various platforms. We had quite a lot of news coming in today related to Overkill, to Infinity War, to Destiny 2 Black Armory, Xbox Game Pass, The Elder Scrolls, Aliens vs Predator, Anthem and many other games. As you know we are literally approaching the Christmas period and the retailers and developers are offering us all sorts of niceties via through various bundles and special offers or indeed through some news such as video clips, developer diaries and all the other goodies which they can provide to keep us really abreast of all development. So without further ado let's just have a look at what's come to our shores today. I've heard that the Game Awards of 2018 will feature the directors of Avengers Infinity War. And obviously there is immediately a question rising, is Avengers Project Reveal on the cards? So the directors, Jaren Anthony Russo, or Russo I should say, will be making an appearance at the Game Awards 2018 next week. And that was confirmed by Jeff Kigley, who is the host. He revealed this on his Twitter. In fact, I did receive his Twitter earlier today indicating that this was going to be happening. And if you're not following Jeff, please do so. He is obviously offering uh, the best and the latest, not just on the uh, Game Awards, but overall industry news and definitely a great guy. So you should head to Twitter and make sure you follow his tweets. There's no word yet on what the year will be there for. Although there's a couple of reasons that they could be turning up. First, the brothers are known to be pretty big gamers. Plus, they're also, um, they also have a new Avengers film to promote. More exciting is the Avengers gaming development at Crystal Dynamics. So, could the Russos give us the first look at the project? Well, let's hope so, but we're not sure. Nothing has been confirmed at this point. Although it's certainly an exciting prospect. Meanwhile, it's been rumoured that we are going to get quite a few high-profile reveals at the Game Awards, which include Alien Blackout, Obsidian's new RPG, and maybe, 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 from Bioware, some Dragon Age news as well. And as you know, they did confirm already that 10 new games will be announced at the event, so everyone is eagerly waiting uh, for this event to start. And indeed, it will be next week, so not really far away at all. We've heard quite a lot, Kill, and so we've heard today that season two of Overkill, Steve Walking Dead, has kicked off, introducing a wealth of new content for the co-op zombie survival game. In addition, Star Breeze, Skyban Entertainment, and Five Zero Five Games have revealed that new version of the game. The start edition is now available for $29.99. This features all of the content included in Season 1 of Other Kills The Walking Dead. Season 2 of the horror title kicks off a brand new story as the survivors face a new enemy embedded on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. The first chapter in the sanctuary sees the survivors storm Georgetown in a daring raid to rescue an informant and will be followed by eight additional episodes taking players through to summer of 2019. In addition to fresh story missions, Overkill's The Walking Dead has also gained an in-game voice chat with Steam, while the survival guide is a handy tutorial that brings newcomers up to speed with the core mechanics of the game. Season 2 will bring additional weapons, mods and other surprises in the coming months, so the developer says. As you know, the Overkill's The Walking Dead launched for PC earlier this month. Although sales were well below expectations, the game will roll out for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in February of 19, only 2 or 3 months away from today. Well, we are coming to our favourite game, the Destiny World, and we have some incredible news coming out today. And this is what everyone's been asking for. 
for months and months, and I should say probably for up to four years. Destiny 2's Black Armory will let you raise your power level to 650. So Bungie has been spilling a lot more details on Destiny 2's Black Armory DLC, well advertised in the last few days, well viewed in the developers' diaries and all the other uh, wallpapers and screenshots which were received through Bungie and Destiny the game on Twitter. They confirmed the expansion will bump up the power level by 50 points. This means Guardians will be able to grind towards a total power level of 650. The great news is that you can start acquiring gear over 600 if you own Saken. So you actually will not need Black Armory or the annual pass to start the grind. Having said that, new content coming to Destiny 2 will offer many more opportunities to get your hands on powerful gear. You know, at the end of the day, if you are bypassing certain offers, then perhaps you will feel stranded. And I think everything is sort of moving down the direction of Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Pass and all the niceties which we've seen on that wallpaper which looks a bit like your advent calendar, you know, the dates are there and all the things which will be coming our way on those certain dates. So I think annual pass is definitely the way forward. Guardians are below the 550 power level. Bungie confirmed that there will be more of a chance to basically bag Prime Engrams to help buff your character. So obviously they will be working on the different ways for people to move up the ladder. But my suspicion is that if you are obviously the annual pass holder or the season pass holder, then perhaps the journey will be somewhat faster. Well, remains to be seen, but that's just my assumption. Either way, it looks absolutely astonishing, and I think everyone should head there. The new power level will be required to tackle the scourge of the pass rate, and we've heard about the uh, you know the scourge, which comes packaged with black armory. So this will come with recommended level of 640. So you really need to hoover up those engrams if you stand a chance of completing the raid. Destiny 2 was released on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in September of last year. So it's gone really 14 months or so. And arrived on PC the following month. And indeed we had the freebie for the PC recently as well. Which was delivered to us by Blizzard. So that's wonderful, we just can't wait to increase our power level to 650. As you know, I'm also grinding and progressing up the ladder on Destiny 2. On Destiny 1, I'm playing my second character and building his strength. The second character in Destiny 1 is Hunter, and I'm playing Warlock in Destiny 2. We did finish the base game, Destiny 2, recently, and at the moment we are playing all the additional adventures which were left out. So, a lot to see, a lot to enjoy, a lot to watch for my streams as far as Destiny 2 Forsaken is concerned. We have some news on Strange Brigade and Xbox Pass. And indeed, it is exciting. We've heard that Xbox Game Pass will be expanding with Strange Brigade. So, Microsoft had confirmed that three more games will be basically progressing the way to Xbox Game Pass. So one of them is already available as of yesterday, with the other two arriving perhaps next week. Voxel Agents Puzzler The Gardens Between is now available, although we recommend whether it's like to be of your preference. Next up is Mutant Zero on December the 4th, followed by Rebe Rebellion's Strange Brigade on December the 6th. And indeed, we are going to hear more announcements from Xbox Game Pass. So watch this space for more news on some games which are going to be included on the roster. Elder Scrolls, we heard that Blades have been delayed. And apparently, it's been pushed into early 2019. If you remember, the Blades were announced during the company's E3 press event, the Elder Scrolls Blades, and this is a mobile title for Android and iOS. It was originally penciled in for release this year, so we've had we've been given no reason for this delay, but probably it doesn't really matter, because it, by, by the way it looks, it, it is not going to be out until sometime next year. But 
it's worth noting you can still sign up for early access if you fancy it so just go to videogamer.com or to elder scrolls online and then the website i should say and then just simply click on the adequate links and you'll get it straight away we've heard that bethesda is also working on elder scrolls 6 although this is certainly a long way away but you know they are working on it and Tom Howard almost certainly knows when the game is likely to materialize but so far we are hearing absolutely nothing very good news for those of you who have been playing Aliens via Predator on the Xbox 360 we've heard today from Microsoft that the game is joining Xbox One backwards compatibility lineup so no need to be buying anything else but simply uh, you know yourself being able to use your Xbox One in order to access backward compatibility and then you can crack on with 2010 sci-fi shooter Alien the as Predator as you remember a very very popular game developed by Rebellion and they are very well known for the Sniper Elite series. This game, Aliens Against Predator, offers a campaign for three factors, Aliens, Colonial Marines and Predators. It's not really a sequel to the previous Alien vs Predator game, but rather a reboot of the series. That really kind of picks up on some of the elements from uh, Paul Anderson's movie of the same name. Uh, also playable on Xbox One, is Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, the action RPG from 38 Studios that launched on PlayStation 3, PC and Xbox 360 back in 2012. And finally Sonic Unleashed also joins the lineup, uh, which you probably remember was seen as a return to the Blue Blur's platforming roots. Sonic Unleashed was originally conceived as a follow-up to Dreamcast classic Sonic Adventure 2. Well, you probably know this, if you have any of those old games on disc, you can pop them into Xbox, Xbox One to play them, or head simply to ready to download section if you have digital copies. Once the backward compatibility has been ticked off, this is what happens. As you know, we are all very, very excited and equally curious about BioWare's next major blockbuster. Of course, you guessed it. It is Anthem, and Anthem's closed alpha gets a launch date. So basically the period will kick off on December the 8th for PlayStation 4, PC and Xbox One. Publishing Powerhouse Electronic Arts has announced, in fact, I had been watching lots of trailers on PlayStation 4 network yesterday. One of those was Anthem, and it had developer diaries and various other interesting trailers telling us literally everything about the project so if you're not done so head to PlayStation Store find a section for Anthem and access all these beautiful developer diaries and trailers have a look they are very educational and will point you into the right direction It'll give you a good idea whether you are likely to enjoy the game or not it comprises influences from about two or three games on one hand it feels a bit like Halo, on the other it looks like Mass Effect. There is also the element of special suits that the characters will wear, they'll fly, they will be a bit like some sort of modern centurions, and there is plenty of action, a lot of open world gameplay and all other sorts of niceties that we expect from Bioware. So obviously head there, have a look. The Coast Alpha will run until December the 9th, and will only be available to a small number of gamers. To be in for a shot, you'll need to sign up for the alpha test on EA Community website. There is no pre-order guaranteed access at all. So you need to go to EA Electronic Arts Community website and sign up if you want to be doing that on December the 8th. Developer Bioware also warned that the closed alpha may not be the most stable experience as the studio will be fiddling with various settings including matchmaking during the test. Right now it doesn't know exactly what part of Anthem will be showcased during the closed alpha, although it, it will still give players a chance to test drive the game a few months ahead of the release. 
Anthem is due to release on February the 22nd of 2019, so about three months away. Three story based DLC planned, and fortunately, no loot boxes. And everyone who is a great Mass Effect fan, such as myself, will be receiving some music to bear or our ears. And we learn that there are going to be some N7 style armor for grabs as well. So we are going to be able to use some of the N7 armor and kit in this wonderful new game. We've heard a few other bits of information from Bioware and that was not related to Anthem but one of our all time favorites, Dragon Age. So they are really teasing through their postings perhaps a Dragon Age announcement. Casey Hudson has revealed that the studio is looking to make an announcement soon regarding their plans for the Dragon Age series. Writing on the Bioware blog, Hudson, who lead development of the Mass Effect franchise, reaffirmed that he'll be, taking, he'll be talking about its future plans really soon. In fact, it is going to be next month. He says, if you've been following these blogs, myself, Magdara on Twitter, you know, we are also working on some secret Dragon Age stuff. Dragon Age is an incredibly important franchise in our studio, and we're excited to continue its legacy. Look for more on this in the coming month. So, quite frankly, keep your eyes peeled on Twitter, and that will be Twitter accounts of Casey Hudson's, Mac Dara, and Bioware. In fact, you can obviously access the other ones, which are related to other games, but they are likely to be um, providing us with the first glimpse of what is to happen next. December is very, very exciting for all gamers from the world. One of the reasons is that obviously this month is hosting uh, the Game Awards 2018, so there could be all kinds of rumors flying about. And indeed, the gamers and developers will be talking through their community forums and live events. So absolutely be prepared for some of the rumours at least. Uh, a new Dragon Age has been teased numerous times by Bioware this year. Mark Barra was confirmed as executive producer on the new game. Although in the summer, Bioware said it was still figuring out what shape the next title would take. It's then reported that Anthem would somehow influence the new Dragon Age. But I think these were just speculative rumours. It's very unlikely that there would be any form of interconnection between those two projects. But you never know. Do you remember when you were able to use some of the weapons from Mass Effect in Gears of War? Do you remember that? That was literally one of the first experiences with that sort that I've had. So we are coming to the last bit of news for today. The game very exciting one of my favorite adventure games life is strange is basically uh, going to be having the episode 2 and this has been confirmed for early 2019 so just literally months away don't nod has confirmed that life is strange 2 episode 2 rules is scheduled for release in january of 2019 to speak in the blog post, the studio, which has worked also on the gothic flavoured vampire, explained that it doesn't want to rush development of the sequel, and this is why they're having to wait a bit longer than expected for the second episode. As you remember, A Life is Strange is an amazing game, it's very massive and with beautiful graphics and wonderful narrative, and indeed everyone's very eager to see the follow-up, and it is recommended that they are taking time and really work on every single detail because what we don't want is a kind of disappointment and I'm quite certain that the time spent on the episode 2 will basically bear fruit. They said we understand that there are certain expectations that episodes will be released at a similar periods as previous Life is Strange games have the ambition of Life is Strange 2 however, means that the previous frameworks will no longer apply if we are to meet the quality of play and storytelling that our vision for a game like this demands and that you all, the gamers, deserve. This is what the developer said. 
The good news is we will not have to wait too long for more information. And they said more news will be coming out during the December month. And that's just like literally days away. You know that, well, you remember the Life is Strange 2 debuted on PlayStation 4, PC and Xbox One in September. And indeed, there are plenty of reviews, niceties and videos online available. You can just head to videogamer.com, to gamespot.com or to IGN.com for in-depth reviews, videos and all other niceties. These were all the news I received today. As you can see, they're quite exciting. I'm particularly looking forward to the Game Awards. Not as much to hear what games will be sweeping the floor. More to do with the rumours and the news for whatever is coming next, during the next year. Anthem, Dragon Age, you know, these are the games that really are on my brain, as well as Resident Evil 2 Redux, or I should say Remake, which we are also eagerly expecting. We've seen some uh, footage during the um, E3, I think it was, or was it? Yeah, it was E3, rather than uh, the conference in Mexico City, and it looked very, very appealing, I have to say. In Mexico City, they were showing us the other major project of the studio, which is Devil May Cry 5, of course. And indeed, yesterday I spent some time looking through all the videos which are linked to those new projects and I did watch the developer diary on Devil May Cry 5. I watched quite a selection, Just Cause 4 and uh, Darksiders 3 which has just come out and I have to say just one better than another. You know every single game is catering for somebody's uh, taste and we have these outstanding graphics and very exciting gameplay so it's very very hard to choose and indeed the games are becoming bigger and more demanding so therefore we have to be a bit careful with our choices as you know certain games like Elder Scrolls or Destiny uh, do build very very long-term communities of gamers and people who will be revisiting and playing them for many months and years compared to maybe some short adventure games which you obviously finish up and you know basically do not come back for a little while and um, there are lots of interesting videos on PlayStation Network I actually advise it to go to PlayStation Store even if you're not intended to buy anything and just access the section for videos you know like trailers and developer diary and all that and they look absolutely amazing on 4k tv and you know you can just literally immerse and they really bring forward that degree of excitement which we all have when anticipating uh, what is going to come to our desks tomorrow you know just think about last month fallout 76 battlefield 5 red dead redemption 2 and it's just absolutely astonishing um, Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, uh, just a few weeks beforehand, you know, it's too many games through its play and indeed to enjoy. But as we know, each one of those is building down communities and all of them are doing extremely well. FIFA 19 is doing the best at the moment. I'm not really a great um, football online kind of gamer, but obviously that game was able to take over. We had several weeks of Red Dead Redemption 2 sitting on the place number one. And in the course of this week, it had swapped places with FIFA 19. Regrettably, Fallout 76 has not been doing particularly well. It has been plagued by all kinds of technical issues and bugs and various other problems. But I'm sure that they're studying everything they can to remedy this as soon as possible and progress forward really um, with the best possible content. It's possible that Fallout 76 will resemble Destiny with lots of season passes and you know downloadable content and all other niceties that will sort of come our way in due course. But the initial week has been plagued by all kinds of difficulties and that is what we really do not want to see. Um, when the game is launched there is so much hype and indeed there is a very large marketing budget spent on all that is happening uh, you know, prior to the game release and every developer wants to attract as many people as possible to enjoy the content and then you know these kinds of things happen i have to say one thing that concerns me and it's done really for quite a while already uh, not just in the gaming industry but also um, it's been widespread probably even more so in music and film industries is so-called pre-release reviews well a lot of people who watch you know films and music um, 
live and elsewhere, they are attending certain events where you have a peek of what is what's come next. And in, in the film industry, it's to do with festivals, you know, and pre-release screenings. And very frequently, you have a certain project, an avalanche of very negative reviews. I watched very many films which were slated and were given terrible pre-release reviews. And in fact, they seem completely ill-conceived and unjustified. So, you know, if the same sort of thing happens to any of those games, then obviously the game is suffering, um, particularly in the first few weeks, in terms of the sale. And we can only hope that the developers can remedy the technical issues and then enable all the other content as expected for the gamers. Because obviously, uh, for a for game of full of 76 magnitude, any major glitches or problems uh, at the very launch could be detrimental for the future development. And, you know, from the shareholders' point, point of view, the sales are not particularly good and the press is generating all that negativity, then certain question marks are being raised. I do not want to see that. I love Fallout. I've played Fallout literally since its inception. So I do want to see everything resolved in peace. Right, I'm just rambling on a bit about these other games, but I just want to really direct you towards the next week. Next week is the Game Awards week and we'll have lots of things happening and we want to see obviously um, the winners and we want to get those rumours. Rumours for me related to as I said, Anthem, Dragon Age and perhaps Resident Evil. At the end we are always going to have a look at some special offers, bundles and sales and I said to you earlier yesterday that I received some news from PlayStation Store or from PlayStation HQ that they are intending to start with a Christmas sale today and I was a bit surprised because that seemed a bit early but indeed they have started with their Christmas sales and as already said many times before in my podcast PlayStation are really perhaps the leaders in the industry with those sales and special offers every week on Tuesday they rotate the games and you really can find lots of your favorites offered periodically on very very low prices there's there have been some complaints actually raised about Black Friday and everyone said well why is it that you're offering the latest blockbusters on 10% or 5% off which actually was not much of a sale and I think some of the executives listened to those concerns and adjusted. So, for instance, you are going to be able to enjoy some of the better discounts today. And the f basically, the way the Christmas deals are going to work is your three to four day sales. So, they'll start on Friday and end on Monday, basically, Monday night. And four days of sales on certain products, certain selected games. And there will be three lots of those, right? So we are watching the first one so far. I'll go through the games. Battlefield 5, the full game, which otherwise costs you £60, is offered on 33% discount. So you can get a brand new game for £39.99. In fact, I was watching Developer Diaries yesterday, and not just one, but several. And I must admit, the game looks absolutely astonishing. And it seems to me that the potential for Season Pass and for DLC is exponential. It's extraordinary. I wonder what is really included in the bundle game that I want to be playing extensively in no time. So, a very good price, £40. And that's 33% off from the regular or standard price. Soul Calibur 6 offered as a base game or your deluxe edition. The base game is $34.99, the Deluxe Edition is $52.99, again a very very good price. Call of Cthulhu, full game usually costs you £47.99, now offered on 40% off, only for £30.29.99 to be precise. So that's looking very good. I did watch the Developer Diaries as well, it looked very interesting, I've not played the game yet. I'd be very very curious for my community. Um, to hear from my community if anybody had already engaged and whether you find it really good and interesting. It looked beautiful in terms of the graphics and very atmospheric. I wondered what the gameplay was like. What was like, you know, what sort of infantry, if infantry, inventory did it have? 
so let me know send me a tweet or send me a message related to Call of Cthulhu well, one of the best bundles in fact which I've seen on the roster offered at the moment and in fact I even saw it today in my local CEX is Bioshock the collection and the bundle contains all the elements of all three games so basically what you will get is you the collection contains all single player content from Bioshock Bioshock 2 and Bioshock Infinite uh, all single player and add-on content as well which is the Columbia's finest pack and director's commentary imaging Bioshock featuring Ken Levin and Sean Robertson so if you wanted this is your full Monty on um, the um, Bioshock franchise and for eight ninety nine, you will get literally everything so that's fantastic that's the best offer you cannot go wrong head to PlayStation Store buy it straight away because I can assure you I've seen it in my CX and it was priced if I'm not mistaken about 15 16 pounds so it was you know way above that sort of price of nine pounds and you get three games with all DLC with as you've heard the director's commentary and everything else so absolutely it is a must the best offer today buy a shop the collection bundle ps4 on playstation now on playstation store uh offered on the price of nine pounds which is 80 80 percent off bloodborne the game i introduced a couple of weeks ago through playstation now services uh, which is also offered on the price of 16 pounds generally now it's offered on 50 percent off and that is 7.99 so if you are very much in favor of Edgar Allan Poe style gaming and uh, games with kind of Victorian gothic auspices well this is your bread and butter get the game and you will love it I have to warn you it has safe checkpoints similar to early Resident Evil so you have to be replaying certain sections again and again and also it does have a very complicated uh, inventory it takes a bit of time to we could figure out for me, you know, how, how to operate it. But once you do that, the game is thoroughly exciting, very enjoyable, and I have to admit, pretty scary. So if you wanted Blood, but if you loved it, if you wanted the Game of the Year edition that has absolutely everything, then just have a look and see what the Game of the Year edition actually includes. It includes the Old Hunters DLC, which is a new story campaign in which you will unearth the harrowing tale of the Hunters once made Yarum the playground. You'll find multiple outfits and new transformable weapons to add to your arsenal. They include Simon's uh, bow blade and a new experience with ranged combat. So you can play with arc spells and transform yourself into a horrific beast. So lots of goodies included in there. Definitely looks like a better version of Bloodborne. And if you look at it, the base game costs you $7.99 and the game of the year $12.99 so it's not really a major increment it's only about four pounds different and what you will get will serve you really really well in the game so consider one of those two then you have Uncharted The Lost Legacy offered on the price of $12.99 that's discount of 56% for anybody who is a dedicated PlayStation gamer well, you'll know that Uncharted is the proprietary game. You cannot play it on any other platform. So this is your opportunity, twelve ninety nine, or indeed, if you subscribe to PlayStation Now services, then you can play all of the installments free of charge uh, through your subscription. You cannot stream them on Twitch because they're not downloadable, but you can just stream them directly through that PlayStation portal and enjoy them as much as you like. Titanfall 2 is another best offer of today offered on the price of £3.99 and near £4 the discount is of 86% so it's probably one of the biggest discounts of the day or of the weekend uh, so it's Titan 4 to standard edition £4 and then the ultimate edition that includes obviously some extras let's have a look what the extras are very many you get access to all of the content including the digital deluxe edition it includes a jumpstart pack so it instantly unlocks all titan pilot classes and arms you with the funds double xp tokens custom war paint skin for the r201 carbine you can get the speed on the frontier 
the ultimate edition includes Titanfall 2 base game and then content which is Scorch and Ion Prime Titans, Warpaint for 6 Titans, Camo for all Titans, Pilots and Weapons, Muse Arts for 6 Titans, Deluxe Edition, Core Sign, etc. etc. Jumpstart content, all Titans unlocked, all Pilot Tacticals unlocked, 500 tokens to unlock loadouts, cosmetics and gear. 10 times XP tokens. I beg your pardon, I think it's 102 times XP tokens. And the underground R201 carbon war paint. So really, <laughs> the ultimate edition is providing you with an abundance of extra content and kit. And for that price difference, it's certainly a no-brainer. Both of those are offered on the discounts of 86 and 83%, so I would say Titanfall 2 Ultimate Edition is your best bet. The other popular game, the survival struck horror game Dying Light, you can get either for 9.99 as a base game, or you'll buy the following enhanced edition for 13.99. Let's have a look what actually is in this enhanced edition. It says that it's taking us to a whole new level. We could be enjoying the definitive Dying Light experience with a brand new legend system, completely improved visuals, major gameplay enhancements and a lot more. Comes with all the available bonus content, includes Be the Zombie, Cuisine and Cargo, Ultimate Survivor Bundle and the Bozak Horde. Last but not least, travel beyond the walls of Haran to discover a vast dangerous new region in Dying Light the following. So there is a, a massive new story-based expansion that will bring mysterious characters, deadly new weapons, unexpected quests, and fully customizable and drivable dirt buggies. You know, at the end of the day, for all the games that have been around for maybe a couple of years, I tend to go for the best pack. Because sometimes you may need to pay a bit more, but when you buy the best pack, you get everything that was available over the months and years. You know, like for Destiny, I bought the collection. The collection has everything. Nothing is missing. So there's no need for you to be trying out the game and then buying all the extras and, you know, add-ons and DLCs in due course. You've got everything in one pack. So I think the um, Dying Light, the following Enhanced Edition, is exactly that. And we have a few more games left, if everyone is still patient and would like to hear a bit more. I told you a bit earlier that I'm really excited uh, about Resident Evil 2 and the remake. I've seen some clips and they're literally astonishing. I've played Resident Evil Trilogy when it came out and certainly it was your next generation game at the time. So really excited. But PlayStation Store is offering us the Biohazard Gold Edition Resident Evil 7 on the price of 19.99 and also you can get the base game for 12.99 so let's have a look at the gold edition and let's see what the gold edition will give us in um, you know in addition to the to the very base game so um, as you remember it was really claimed to be one of the most frightening terrifying scariest games of 2017 and the gold edition comes complete with all season pass content so as Ethan Winters, you can explore the seemingly abandoned Baker Mansion and uncover the truth behind the disappearance of your wife. The Gold Edition contains the full game, so that's the base game, the DLC band footage, Volume 1 and 2, and the Ender Zoe epilogue episode. The free DLC Not the Hero is also included. So the, the ver this version of the game contains the same content as the Deluxe Edition. So just remember, if you are the owner of Deluxe Edition by Hazard, do not buy Gold Edition, because it is exactly the same. So it's very useful that Sony did notify us of the similarity. $12.99, the <coughs> Gold Edition $19.99. And the last game, <coughs> and the last game before us today, is one of our personal favorites Dark Souls 3 that is not offered as a ultimate or um, platinum edition but rather the base game 
uh, offered on the price which is discounted by 71% so from 44.99 it's gone down to 12.99 I am quite certain that most of you would have played Dark Souls either number one two or three and indeed if you were to buy this particular game you could still buy the season pass um, season pass and then you will have some extra content coming in right as you could see plenty of us uh, plenty of us to enjoy PlayStation Store is offering us this very early Christmas goodies they're beating all the other retail retailers to it I guess it is a, it is a bit of a surprise to me as well that they're giving it a week later after the black you know the Black Friday discounted weekend but indeed the offers are there We've listened to some of the punters and Sony regulars and as you could see some of the uh, heavyweights such as Battlefield 5 can be acquired on a very good discount of 33% so hopefully you find some of these recommendations of interest uh, I hope that you are also a passion gamer of Battlefield, Soul Calibur, Call of Cthulhu, Bioshock, Bloodborne, Uncharted, Titanfall, Dying Light, Resident Evil and Dark Souls and if you are now is the time to buy all those Ultimate Game of the Year editions. They're offered on the fraction of the price. Thank you all for coming. We are coming to the end of our gaming industry news. And we are going to be continuing our evening with Destiny as always. The gameplay is just about to start. So if you are there, please come in. Join our Destiny 1 broadcast. As you know, I'm playing as Hunter. He is my second character and basically racing through various levels and adventures so it will be very exciting we've had a very busy night last night lots of people have come in and the night before was almost entirely spent on co-op and we had some incredible missions dedicated quite a section on my twitter to my teammates and fire team members and i would like to see as many of you as possible joining us again so i wish you all a very very good gamers night